Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is Elo Yu, a professor with the University of Macau's Department of Government and Public Administration. Amongst the ongoing epidemic situation, the chief executive has made his first ever policy address, laying out measures to progress and recover from the ongoing epidemic. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. It was interesting having the chief executive uh, give his first policy address since he's assumed the role and, and obviously amongst the ongoing epidemic situation. A lot of it was focused on health and mm -hmm. epidemic recovery measures. Yeah. But what, what was your overall impression of the policy address? Well, I think uh, his document and report, it showed that uh, he would like to uh, project his new image and uh, governing style mm -hmm. in the Macau SAR. Particularly, you know, I would say that uh, he would like to use the scientific approach uh, to, you know, uh, so that his government is trying to, to use a rational uh, approaches to managing the public issue, particularly when he uh, introduced uh, his uh, process address at the very beginning. He just like to highlight that, you know, uh, what we did, we achieved in the past two decades and uh, what, what is the current situation in Macau right now. And so uh, based on this context and then uh, he would suggest what he would like to do. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that this is what he would like to show that now I'm going back to the scientific management approach and show that, you know, I'm doing my policy based on uh, the fact and data information. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you can also see that when, when the uh, legislator questioned him about um, the five-year plans, mm -hmm. he also using similar approach to answer this question. There's, you know, uh, we have uh, to, uh, you know, measure the situation by using different indicators. Uh, and then uh, we got to evaluate what we achieved in the past. And, mm -hmm. so, and so before doing, before having the five-year plans, uh, we got to have all this information and then I can have a step forward. Mm -hmm. And so it showed me that for the whole pictures, he would like to show to the Macau citizens that now uh, we are doing scientific management. Mm -hmm. Well, he's projected a lot of strength in all of his previous um, appear public appearances since the, the outbreak of the epidemic. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that he had the same type of tone? I found it was a very interesting move for him to remove his mask mm -hmm. before he gave the policy address. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you read anything into that particular gesture other than him just being comfortable? Um, no, I think that, you know, uh, according to the presidents of the legislature, and then mm -hmm. he just like to make the, the chief to be more convenient or more comfortable when presenting his process. But, you know, during the press conference, right, he, he's still having his mask. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I believe that this is uh, what uh, well, uh, the, the, the management of the legislature rather than would like to show his own uh, gesture. Mm -hmm. Within, when, when he started within the policy address, he did do a whole segment, like you said, detailing what had happened within the mm -hmm. past 20 years, but then also kind of highlighting the recent administration. Mm -hmm. And he was very highly critical of some certain things, overlapping functions of public departments, lack of clarity, inconvenient service for residents, lack of assuming responsibility, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, would you say, I mean, obviously he was in the, he was heading up the legislative body mm -hmm. during the, the period of the previous govern, government. Would you say that that's accurate? Uh, yes, but you know, uh well, we, we have a problems, okay, in governments, uh, in the SARs, and then uh, we, we got to do some reform. But, you know, uh, I, I actually, frankly, I would say that I, I have a little bit of uh, disappointment uh, for his, uh, you know, his um, um, concept in understanding the public sector reform, particularly what as what you say, uh, well, we would like to have the uh, customer-oriented government, mm -hmm. okay, to, to how to improve uh, government efficiency. And, but all these concepts has been stressed in the, two, in the past two decades, mm -hmm. right? In the past 20 years, the, when the government talk about public sector reform, Right, we talk mm -hmm. about you know government efficiency, how to deliver service uh, more efficiently, and then to chip the people to, 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 to manage the people just like the, the customer and clients. And so, but you know, what we experienced in the past ten years, especially under uh, Mr. Financial Choice era, mm -hmm. right? And then we find that now uh, we are no longer just talking about the government efficiency. Actually, I believe that many Macau citizens has already recognized that the governments have 
we found a lot and did a good job to improve its efficiency in, deliv in delivering uh, public policy. Mm -hmm. But what is next? What is the problems? Yeah. What is the core issue that we got to do the reform? And I, I find that he, he did not manage, uh, or did not mention uh, what, what is the problems mm -hmm. inside the government right now. But my understanding is that, as like what I, I mentioned in the past, that is, you know, uh, we are not no longer talking about public services, but we are talking about how do you make the policy? Mm -hmm. The policy that is more efficient and, and then down to the earth, right? That is, can we, uh, respond to the public demand, right? Mm -hmm. And many Macau citizens have has been criticizing the Macau government uh, while well, in policy making. That is, when the government make consultation, mm -hmm. yes, that is, that is con uh, consultation. But, you know, the people will say that, you know, we, we voice out, but no, no consequence, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I believe that this is what uh, I expect this new government can do something more in this regard. But, uh, well, but in terms of public sector reform, I find that uh, Mr. Hall seems to adopting the previous approach, but I would say that's old wine, at the same time, not a new bottle. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, um, what about, though, in terms of the reshuffles that he's already done? He did move the Tourism Bureau into mm -hmm. under the Economic Bureau, and I'm sure that we're gonna see some more progressive changes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that, well, for one, he's coming from a position in which he's generally liked by the mm -hmm. Macau population due to the response, the government's response to the epidemic and how they've relatively quickly kind of gotten it under control. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that's going to help in terms of his governance? And if so, does that then give him a boost up that other politicians would not normally have? Uh, yes, I, I believe that what, what the government did actually is uh, I, I think the Macau people will be satisfied. Okay, especially at the very beginning when the government, you know, tried to spread, uh, uh, tried to stop the spread of the disease in the local community, mm. and at the same time, it is uh, just to uh, uh, brought uh, the the uh, border. At the same time, you'd like to uh, identify some uh, mainlanders from Wuhan or mm. or Hebei, okay, and then to uh, to ask them to leave Macau. And actually, this image has been in part has been you know uh, uh, part in uh, the Macau people's mind that you know the government did a very proactive and preemptive measure, and so uh, they think that this government is seems to be is leading mm -hmm. uh, the people to, to counter the, um, the disease. Okay. But now we are facing another issue, that is the economic pr mm -hmm. problem. And then uh, it seems that you know, we have more and more noises in the community that you know, different sectors, they, they, they're talking about their difficulties and what kinds of uh, uh, subsidies or, 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 or remedies that the government can help mm -hmm. to rescue the, the, the sectors. And it seems to me that uh, that is the government seems, uh, well, respond uh, slowly, or even they are still talking about uh, home, shall we subsidize mm -hmm. or help? And so, but you know, this actually generate a problem in the community, or actually a, a debate in the community. Oh, we, we, we are spitting now. Okay, we have different opinion, and so it cannot help to to unify the people. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, what we we got to do. But you can see in the West, okay, in the United States, in Europe, in in, in uh, UK, and then well, they have the disease spread in the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, Later, right? But they have a very, uh, very efficient measures, okay, to helping the uh, uh, small enterprises, right, to helping uh, this enterprise to pay the salaries. Mm -hmm. But our, our government, right, we are very good in managing the disease. But when we are talking about the economic problems, then we just stop over here, and we, we believe that the the uh, consumer uh, consumer uh, voucher mm -hmm. can can help. But you know. This, the, the answer seems not to be. And so uh, it's going back to what I'm talking about, the public sector reform that is, you know, when the government going to do policy is, is now, mm -hmm. okay, stuck over here, that is, the government still cannot go beyond in the past that, yes, we are very professional in managing some technical issue, very efficient, okay, but when we got to have policy, uh, to manage the people, to communicate with the people, then you can see we are not that effective mm -hmm. at the moment. And so that I would like the public sector to be reformed in the sense that it can be more effective 
in communicating with the people or even how can you include the people to make the system to be more inclusive okay, uh, so that the people can be united okay, easily uh, in order to, to make policy. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seems to me that uh, this pandemic again shows that okay, we have a very good and efficient government in managing technical issue, mm -hmm. but in terms of policy related to the people, then uh, we still at this po position. Do you think that the people are going to be more politi politically participative now because of the, the epidemic situation and the fact that mm -hmm. they're so strongly affected, people are losing their jobs, their businesses, uh, some people their homes? Do you think that that's going to encourage more political participation and maybe have a more of a focus on exactly what policies are or are not getting made? Uh, well, at the moment, it's not. We cannot see that there are a lot of you know demand for participation. But of course, you can see uh, we have more and more noises or, or, or people just waiting out their concern, especially mm -hmm. from the business set, sector, uh, the small enterprise or, or, or medium enterprise, right? They have a, a lot of problems they want the government to address, right? But the point that is now they are facing a, a technical and practical issue that is, you know, uh, when the people have such opinion, are you going to manage this opinion or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or do you think that whether this opinion will generate certain political pressure? And so uh, I, I find that the government seems to be, you know, uh, so neglected, okay, to this point, okay. So they just think that, okay, uh, well, just like uh, Mr. Hall said that, okay, the, the, like, like the casino, okay, I believe that the casino can, can manage the situation mm -hmm. themselves yeah. well, but, mm -hmm. you know, you believe, but did you talk to them, okay? I mean, he himself said that they haven't, within the past four months, they have yes. almost not met with the yes. casino operators. So is that, that is my point. You, you can see that, you know, that is my point, you know. You just think that they, they don't have problem, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you did not talk to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then the problem that is, you know, there will be a gap, yeah. okay? And so that, that will actually generate problem uh, to the government. So I would say that uh, the government still using their paternalistic approach, okay, in making government that is from top down, mm -hmm. but you know, if you fail to understand at the bottom, and then, you know, there will be a gap, and this gap is going bigger and bigger, and then that, that will be a problem. Mm -hmm. Specifically mentioning the casinos, it was qu it's quite interesting that to get through this whole pandemic and the stimulus measures and everything that which we are able to implement the, um, the consumption vouchers, the subsidized salaries, things like that for residents, uh, they are the fruit of that economic growth that was because of the casinos. So I, I did find it interesting, his stance in regards to them, yeah. saying specifically, oh, they, they will survive, they will be yeah. fine, yeah. Uh, because they are the largest employer in Macau. Right. So. And they're losing a lot of money every <laughs> single day. I mean, we just saw Sam's results. And so, actually, I think everyone now uh, are waiting for the effect of the uh, of the consumption voucher. Mm -hmm. Okay, starting in uh, next week, right? And and so, but uh, I believe that you know uh, the small enterprise actually facing a lot of problem, right? When the government talking about you know using the Macau Foundation mm -hmm. having you know a ten billion right per mm -hmm. okay to help uh, different people, but who are they? Mm -hmm. We have not yet defined. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even who for the subsidized be, schemes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who will be uh, benefit? Okay, mm -hmm. under this scheme. So that's why I say that you know you can see inefficiency is over here. It's not talking about the public policy. Mm -hmm. but why? Why you are not that efficient? And at the same time, right? They are now talking about. There are rumors. Okay, of course uh, the government uh, uh, say no. Right, that is you know. Um, in the in the second phase of the consumption voucher, right, uh, some uh, public servant will be excluded, okay. right, and then uh, you know sooner or later the government just come out, no, 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 it should be the same. But although we are now doing the same, but we have no intention to do so at the moment, right, and so this generates a lot of you know issue, but and and I believe that the government uh, actually is not knowing the priority of the rescue scheme. That is, why do you want to do these schemes, right, uh, for, for, for consumption voucher? Mm -hmm. It is not talking about, you know, to helping, giving money to the, to the citizen, but it is actually would like to have the citizen, right, to spend more mm -hmm. in order to help the local economy. Even though we may face, you know, inflation problem, mm -hmm. or even though some people would like to buy the product they need earlier, okay, 
stairs or, or even you know the, the covering effect okay in, in terms of economics but all this may be the side effect but the priority should be does it work okay so they, we got to think about this rather than so they we, they, we, we face a lot of questions right for this policy and I believe that the government also okay feel that there are many people okay commenting or giving them the opinion that they have a concern about this and that but the priority should be help the small enterprise mm -hmm. that that is the priority right and even though we we face inflation we got to help right the the, the economy and keep employment and so I find that the government seems not that clear about what they are doing, what they need to do, okay? And so this generates my, my question, that is, uh, they are not that, you know, uh, key at what they need to do. Do you think that that's going to be clarified in the near future? Do you think that they're going to get more active in terms of giving us specifics of these plans or going and engaging more with the, the communities, the community leaders and the business people? Yes, that is, you got, when we make policy, you got to tell the people what is the policy objective? Mm -hmm. Okay, why we do this policy, right? This is what we say the rational approach in making policy. That you have the problem, and is this a really problem? And so we do a policy to deal with this problem. Okay, so now we say that the problem that is okay, the shutdown of the small enterprise. Okay, and so we need some policy to help them. Okay. And then we do a lot of policy. And yes, this policy can serve this purpose, but also generate some side effect. Yes, we know every policy will have side effect. We cannot say that one, one policy can deal with all, all, all problems, mm -hmm. okay? We will not have any side effect. So it is, you know, uh, you know that, that, that is not, not true, right? That is, we cannot do a policy that is without any side effect. And so you got to tell the people, yes, we, we realize these problems, but what we got to do that is to deal with the main problem. So do you agree that this is the main problem that we got to deal with, right? So, and so that is a really good example to show the government uh, deficiencies again, that is, uh, it is not that key about the policy objective and you just want to do something. Okay, and to show the people that we are doing something, we're helping you, but for what? What are the objectives? And mm -hmm. so it's not that key at the moment. Well, a lot of these changes will also have to actually be legislated. They have to pass through the Legislative Assembly and they have to then be approved by the lawmakers. Mm -hmm. Given his experience in the role, mm -hmm. um, do you think that there's going to be any chance that he can bring things to a quicker pace? I know that he said that he does intend to do that, but do you think that that's actually possible? It's hard to say. It depends on the, whether the, the legislatures, okay, would like to uh, uh, cooperate with the government, especially mm -hmm. when we're talking about, uh, you know, the business interests. You know, it's come to me that, you know, uh, Mr. Hall may not have very good uh, communications with the business sector, right? Okay. Despite so, him being a businessman, yes, you know, self-proclaimed but businessman. So this actually quite interesting to me that, you know, he, he, he is from the business sector, supposedly, and, mm -hmm. and, and but it seems that you know he, 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 he did not communicate well with the business sector, like the casino mm -hmm. or either other other small enterprises. Okay, and, and so this and I believe that you know when he um have his uh, campaign right in last summer, right, he showed it, he would like to show his image that you know uh, he would like to keep a distance from the business sector, right? And and of course, many Macau citizens have a concern that you know uh, the the possible gov government business collusion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. is not good and corruption, right? And so that's why I believe that he would like to keep a, a distance, and mm -hmm. and it is understandable. But now, when you are in the position, you still got to communicate mm -hmm. with all people different type of people. And, and then, but in this pandemic, right, and then when the government have the uh, various schemes, okay, and well, well, it seems that, you know, no communication with the casino, the small enterprise seems not that happy to what the government is doing right now. And so that, you know, you can see, uh, this is the real problem of our government. Mm -hmm. He did announce some uh, some objectives for going forward. Uh, the, f the principal one, obviously, was combating the epidemic, uh, as we'd mentioned before, guaranteeing employment, stabilizing the economy, which is a big question mark at this point, because, uh, yeah. I mean, how do you stabilize the economy if we don't have any 
consumers. Right. And we can't just dig into our, keep digging into our own pockets forever because, yeah. I mean, we do have reserves, but they run out. So uh, I think that, that is the government got to, you know, make the picture clear. We got to realize and recognize that, yes, without tourists, Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, our tourism, our casino industry, right? We've suffered a lot, and so, but it is out of the control of the Macau government, yeah, right? and so we got to let the public know it, and so the government recognizes, and so the problem there is, you know, we are helping, you know, this industry, right? At the same time, we would like to promote local consumption in mm -hmm. order to help the small enterprise, and we believe that, or even he he got to communicate with the casino that, let's see whether they can sustain, mm -hmm. okay, for several months, okay, without tourists, mm -hmm. or what the government can help. And even, I, I, I'm just, with, I would like to question that is, even, you know, for the casino, right, we don't have tourists. Why shall we still open the casino, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? The, the, that is, of course, the government say that, you know, you, you keep the, 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 the car dealer, okay, mm -hmm. uh, keep working, but, you know, you just asking them to do nothing at the, at the gaming hall mm -hmm. or asking to, to get in their salary at home. And no big difference. But for the casino, right, we still got to pay the utilities, mm -hmm. right? And so there is, I think there, there are lots of issues that they got to talk and think about, you know, what we can help. But I'm not saying that, okay, we, we, we got to subsidize the, the, the casino or, but shall we have any uh, scheme or measure that make that easier? Okay, that, that is, we, we, we always have different way to do it rather than just talking about subsidies, mm -hmm. right? And, but, you know, uh, it seems to me that, you know, now uh, we, we, we don't see that much of this kinds of uh, policy or discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, he even completely sh shot down a, uh, any talk, any discussion about a reduction in the gaming tax. Mm -hmm. He just straight away said no. Mm -hmm. So that, that would have been one of the alternative ways to possibly you know, reduce the burden on the casinos, but that it doesn't appear but to be... That, that, that is not big, I would say that gaming tax may not be a big problem because we don't have income yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the casino. Yeah. And so even we cut, okay, this, mm -hmm. not, this is not a big issue at the moment. But of course, we talk about if we, we open the border again, mm -hmm. okay, if we have a gambler okay, coming in, the, in Macau and then whether okay we can have some subsidies to the, the casino okay I don't know what I'm not doing this kind of research but uh, my, my point there is we got to be together mm -hmm. we, we got to utilize the, uh, the society that is uh, we know what you are you are facing and then what the government can do and what the government cannot do mm -hmm. and why the government cannot do in this way and uh, my my feeling that is, you know, uh, there is no such information to tell the people. And so then people will have their voices, mm -hmm. voice, okay. Oh, we move on this and we want that, but why the government cannot do this and that, okay. But sometimes the government may be correct, but you got to tell the people why we cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the, 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 the principle we stick with, okay. And, and some we can just, you know, uh, uh, in principle, we can do more uh, if you need, need it. Okay, let's do it more. Okay, just like you know, shall we pay the salary uh, of the employee from the uh, small enterprises? Yeah, in the West, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, or they, uh, the government pays seventy five percent. Okay, in some countries. Okay, uh, what what is our government doing? Okay, and so this. Uh, a big issue that we, we got to think about. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it also, he states uh, create employment, not subsidies, but um, you do have to have a concrete plan for that. He did talk about oh, talking to the mainland authorities to see about the IBS, mm -hmm. the individual visa scheme, visit mm -hmm. scheme, to see if they could get that opened up. But yeah, in terms yeah. of the other, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be interesting yes, to so see. Yes, so that is out of the Macau jurisdiction, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, we, we all realize that, okay, but the problem that is, you know, uh, that is, uh, for the small enterprises, okay, what we can do, mm -hmm. okay, and even in, in, in the United States and, and Canada, right, uh, Europe, and then, uh, you know, the government say that just pay mm -hmm. the salary and ask them to shut down, yeah. right? On the one hand, shut down the restaurants, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the government pay the salary. Yeah. That, that is what the rest are doing. I'm not saying that we got to copy, mm -hmm. but Okay. We could, can yeah, do something. It could be a short-term measure to keep everything yes. going. Uh, well, I mean, he, he did talk a lot about, there was a huge focus on, uh, on building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked about the, the fourth bridge, the LRT construction mm -hmm. plan, and mm -hmm. he again detailed that they want to now take yeah. it from the airport to yeah. the border gate. Yeah. 
um, there's a very big focus on building. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, aside from gaming, you know, that's been our other key pillar industry. But how many people does that actually affect? No, I think I mean, that is, you know, government spending yeah. can rescue the economy. Mm -hmm. I think that is using the, the Keynesian approaches, right? That is the government, uh, having gov more government uh, expenditure and then to help the GDP, mm. right? And so that, that is reasonable, okay, and understandable. And so this also may be good to, to, to Macau to a certain extent that, you know, we have the, the fourth and fifth, uh, you know, channel, okay, connecting uh, Macau and Taipa at the center, how to develop uh, Song A mm -hmm. and then to connect Song A with uh, the, the other part of the Macau uh, district. I think that is good. But the question that the next day is uh, master plan, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> when yeah. in the legislature, people talk about the master plan, mm -hmm. okay, you just tell me, you know, there should be some connection between Taipa and Song A. Okay, that's good. But mm -hmm. And then master plan. And he said that you know, I, the government will, will provide a okay, uh, few thousands right, public housing uh, planned uh, mm -hmm. on Song A uh, in this year. And uh, I think that, that is good. Okay? And that is, that is good. And I think that is really good. And so, but the question there is we need the whole master plan of the Song A. But because when we make urban planning, I believe that you know, people will say that well, for this piece of land, you know, how do you divide mm -hmm. okay, the land? for different purposes, okay? This is a kind of, uh, of uh, urban planning. We are not saying that, okay, we just, uh, well, develop this part and then we think another part, right? Mm -hmm. No, we are not doing, we are doing it as a whole, but it's so, it seems to me that, you know, the government still using the old uh, approaches. That is, uh, okay, we just identify a spot on Song A and then we develop it here and then we think about the other spot, mm -hmm. okay, sooner or later. And mm -hmm. so uh, this is not a very good practice for planning. Yeah, it's not a very good long-term strategy. Right. But uh, as a part of that strategy, also we have Heng Chin, which is this yeah. kind of big question mark. Uh, it's been lauded as being the way that Macau can diversify. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you think that we're any closer to understanding exactly what role Heng Chin is going to play? Well, I think I mean? he, he made a long section talking about mm -hmm. Han Chen Island, right? I, and and I, my, my, my impression is that uh, he would like to use Han Chen as a solution. Mm -hmm for Macau's economic diversifications. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, when we're talking about, you know, we are so dependent on the, the casino, we've got to diversify the economy, and then Han Chen should be, or maybe, the solution. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have master plans because Han Chen is not part of Macau. Yeah. But yeah. Mr. Ho said that, you know, uh, we would like Han Chen to be another Macau, mm -hmm. or should have some Macau characteristic. Mm -hmm. I believe that talking about uh, kinds of Macau jurisdiction or some kinds of uh, living uh, style uh, may, may be similar to Macau. And so that's when he would like to suggest to in inject some Macau characteristic on Han yeah. Chen. And uh, I think this is not only the Macau government's ability, but also, you know, the jurisdiction of central government and mm -hmm. Guangdong government, right? How to develop Han Chen or, or whether Han Chen should uh, borrow or adopt uh, some Macau practice is not only controlled by the hands of Macau. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not, right? And so that's why uh, Mr. Hall cannot do anything, okay? Or do too much at the moment. But yeah. it seems to me that this seems, when he talk about this, it seems to me that, that, that there is a consensus between the Macau SAL and the central government at least. There, is a, there should be some Macau characteristic on Han Chen Island. And mm -hmm. when he okay, talked in the legislature, and I believe uh, this is a consensus, but the question there is to what extent? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can't have without, unless it's completely ceded to Macau, yeah. then Macau's laws wouldn't ever be able to apply to it. Yeah. So it would just kind of be this Middle yeah. ground. I think there is a kind of struggle, you know. You, at the very beginning, he said that, you know, oh, can we can be another Macau? That's mm -hmm. been, you know, before the handover, many people have already talked about could Macau manage Han Chen? Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, Jihai and Guangdong government, you know, they have their concern, okay? Yeah. We, we believe, okay? But it seems to me that when Mr. Ho talking about this, uh, this idea still in his mind, or at least in the mind of some Macau top elites, okay, they are thinking about this. And so now we are, we are now in the game mm -hmm. with Central and Guangdong as well as Jihai that, you know, how can we manage, okay, uh, Han Chen, or shall we have another pieces of land similar to uh, the University of Macau? Mm -hmm. That is a, a kind of uh, rental 
um, practice that uh, you know the Macau government give money to the Guangdong government, and then uh, but these pieces of land will under Macau jurisdiction for decades. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I don't know, but you know UM is a is a, is a, is an example or pioneer, mm -hmm. and I believe you know if the Macau government cannot you know have more say on the development of Hanqin, then maybe some pieces of land. We follow the the the, the uh, project of UM yeah. campus mm -hmm. at, on Hanshan Island. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask. Uh, unfortunately, we're drawing to a close in terms of a, the time. Uh, obviously, we saw that um, Ho Yat-sang was Beijing's choice, mm -hmm. and Macau has been uh, known for being more closely aligned with the mainland than, mm -hmm. than let's say, Hong Kong, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, do you think that we're going to see more of a attempt for um, exertion of influence by Beijing on Macau? During well, I, I think that is quite quite obvious. You know, when Mr. Ho Yat-sen, you know, have his uh, process address, he mentions for several times mm -hmm. about overall jurisdiction, mm -hmm. right? And so, and then at the very beginning, we got to you know uh, recognize you know the overall jurisdictions of central government. Mm -hmm. In the middle, he talked about this again. At the end, mm -hmm. he talked again, and also fans the the the, the Beijing's. Uh, departments in Macau yeah. for their support. Mm -hmm. you know, it's quite clear that that is. And at the same time, I would say that, you know, in the, in the press conference, he also said that, you know, uh, I was not a uh, politician. But if you're not politician, my question is, who, are, who you are, mm -hmm. right? And I guess that, you know, uh, he would like to tell the people that I'm now just serving the Macau people and the central government, mm -hmm. okay? Just doing something that you want, okay? And so that is when, when, if you are not politician, that is you are not doing, you are, you are not doing some political issue, particularly talking about how to make policy, mm -hmm. right? When we talk about make, making policy, it's always involving politics. Mm -hmm. But if, if you are not politician, that means <laughs> you are not part of the policy. <laughs> policy. And so this generates a lot of questions to me. And I believe that he, he would like to hint to the people, okay, uh, I'm not doing the political issue part. But I am doing something that what Beijing and Macau people want. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. We, he has a five-year mandate, and then potentially he could get a second term. So we'll, we'll see exactly how much policy he can change, how many of the things that he put forward as he wanted to do will actually get done or get done in the way that right. he wants them to. Thank you very much for being Thank on you. the show. I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, that's all for this week. Join us again next week for more. Good night.